Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Zanetta. If you haven't subscribed, press the subscribe button below and press that notification button so you get notifications every time I upload new content. So thank you so much to those of you guys that have been asking questions, those of you guys that have been subscribing, we see that the 1000 subscriber mark, so I'm really excited about the level of growth that we're achieving. So with, with a lot of you guys who are also sharing content, you're engaging, you're asking questions, you're answering some of the questions that some of the guys that are on the channel for the first time are asking, so I really appreciate how we're becoming a community of sharing knowledge. Actually, this is the fundamental objective of this channel. How can we share knowledge? How can we make it easier to access information? And for those of us that have insights and certain things, how can we make it easier for the next person and the next person and the next person? One of the questions that was asked, in fact, it was a, a recommendation by someone who's just completed their master's in philosophy, so MPhil. And they said, well, it'd be interesting to share and for individuals to know what the difference is between an MPhil and something that's more specific or specializing like an MEng. So both are master's degrees, but the focus is somewhat different. So today, I'll share the differences between, or similarities, between an MPhil and an MEng. Generally, when it comes to master's degree, there are two fundamental types. You can categorize them into two different types. The first type is course-based masters. So this is usually what we're used to where you've got modules and courses and for each a certain number of credits is allocated and depending on the number of credits that are allocated some you may have electives that you select from if you want to specialize in a certain field of that masters but um, ultimately how it's structured is that there's certain courses that you must complete and once you complete those courses then you get the number of credits for you to obtain your masters. In some instances, it's actually a combination where you've got some coursework, but you also have small research to do and a dissertation for you to submit at the end of your, of your master's for you to get the right number of credits. The second type, which is somewhat different from a course type, is a research-based master's. This is where you work with a little bit of supervision from, from a supervisor, but predominantly you work independently on a specific topic or research topic, and you use methodology, whether it's an existing topic or not, or whether you use an hypothesis to prove or disprove a null and alternative hypothesis, as you have discussions and so on and so forth, but a research-based is typically independent um, research on, on a specific topic. What you find with research based is that you could either do it on campus, you could do it remotely, and with the coursework, you usually have to attend the courses. Sometimes you can attend virtually. There may be some lab work that's also involved. There may be some immersions or, or some work that you need to do in industry. But typically with coursework, there is some touch points with campus and with lecturers and institutions. And with research work, it's um, less likely that you'll have as much contact time because actually you design your entire program and when you want to execute what. Typically, research-based masters take a little bit longer than with your coursework. It also depends on how disciplined you are, the rigor that you put in, um, whether a test method that you're using has already been developed and you're just applying it, or if you need to establish one and build one from scratch. So research does take a little bit longer, but it also depends on the individual, the institution, and the type of topic that you've selected. One thing to note about master's degrees, or any degree for that matter, is that naming conventions differ and affiliated with different functions and institutions as well. So naming conventions may vary by location, they may vary by university, they may vary by institute. In overall sense, if you look at the definition of the number of credits being awarded, you'll see that it's fundamentally the, the same qualification. So let's start with an MPhil, so Master in Philosophy. So this is typically a research-based master's and an individual focuses on a research-based project. They have one specific topic and they conduct research to either prove or disprove. I mentioned about hy hypothesis testing is one of the methods you could use. It teaches independence and individual approach to research and how to solve for a particular problem or find scientific data or scientific evidence to prove or disprove a certain topic. With an MPhil, it's usually seen as a precursor to a PhD. So if you're looking to obtain a doctorate, an MPhil is a nice test to see um, whether you, you can actually stand a, a PhD. And they usually also have um, MPhils. It's, it's a good indication to test the waters on whether you can complete a PhD and whether it's something you might be interested in because of the amount of work that you need to put in, because of the amount of research, you would need to read up a lot and do a lot of, of investigation on your own as well. The length of time it takes to complete an MPhil um, is dependent on the individual 
individual, it's varying depending on the institution, on the country, the type of faculty or the faculty in which you're completing your MPhil under. So I can't specify per se and say an MPhil will take one individual two years and another three years and so on and so forth. So it does vary really based on the amount of time you put in, the schedule that you that you, that you design for yourself together with your supervisor. Um, obviously you'll need to get ethics approval and you'll need to get a couple of people to, to proofread. Your supervisor will obviously be supporting you in the journey as well. So it also depends on, I've mentioned earlier, some other variables like the tools and test methods that you'll be applying. So it does vary by, by topic, by individual, by faculty, by country. So with specialist degrees, so these would speak to say a master's in engineering, so an MH. So this would be either academic or professional based. So you could have, I've mentioned the differences in how to obtain one, but you could have an engineering topic that teaches about a fundamental topic and you specialize in that particular topic, whether it be in, in mechatronics or automation, whether it be in aerodynamics, whether it be in condition-based monitoring or using certain tools like accelerometer for vibration analysis on how to improve maintenance and organizations. So it can be very specific. It is rather faculty or field based and can also be applied in industry as well. So an individual can choose to do their masters in engineering on a specific industry or even in the work that they're currently doing. As mentioned, an MPhil teaches an individual on research approach, whereas an MEng actually prepares an individual for industry. Check out my previous videos where I've shared the top five universities in South Africa, in fact, in Africa as a whole. So depending on where you're located, which institute you want to be affiliated with, many institutions, many universities do offer MPhils and they offer MEng or MSCs. I'm keen to know from you guys that are studying your MPhils or MEng, what are you finding as an exciting experience that you can share with some of the viewers what is what is really a fundamental difference that you've seen in what you're currently studying right now for those of you guys that have already completed an MPhil or an MH is there anything you would do differently and if you haven't subscribed press the subscribe button and also the notification button so you can be notified the next time I upload new content remember to live your best life learn as you grow and lead for change shop